Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. It is Monday, new week, new theme. We're going to be checking out retro video game soundtracks, kicking it off with probably one of the greatest retro composers ever, Koji Kondo, who has written so many iconic themes. Today we're going to be checking out his work on The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, from the Super NES. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the ending theme. I presume this is what's played during the final parts of the game or maybe the final credits. Let's dive into it and see what Koji's bringing to the table today. So yeah, we kick it off with a big victory fanfare. Oh, more fanfare. <laughs> There was a twinkling down, though, in the left channel, and it was sort of like finding rest. The end of a journey. Yeah, a lot of the movement is full of staccato. I don't know if that's a limitation of the hardware or a specific choice for the song. I'm trying, I never had a Super NES. I know it had a really good sound chip in it for its time, but I'm going to assume that it's an intentional part of the composition to have such space between all the notes. Every note comes to a very distinct stop before moving to the next. Bringing back the fanfare. So we had a little bit of darkness earlier, and I wonder if that's sort of like chronicling the journey. You know what's really cool is I think that there's a second track for this main melody here that's sort of, it's closer to the center pans, but it allows it to feel like a delay or a reverb. I don't know if they would have had access to uh, a sort of uh, a reverb effect, but it feels like it there. And I think it's just having a second channel that's behind the main one just a little bit. So we still have this response over here to the call now, but this call has never had a response. This is just the main fanfare. A retardando back to the main motif. Although we are right around the middle point, aren't we? Very close. I wonder if we hit the loop. So we have something that sounds like a timpani over here, but we have something that sounds like a big cymbal over here. Oh no, this is a big ending right here. So we have an arpeggiation across three different voices. They also have different placement in the mix. So it feels like we have this movement across while also building the harmony up. Very cool effect. I 
I do have to wonder if there's any callbacks to other themes across the game in this. I've never played Link to the Past, so I don't know. But if so, it would be a nice way to wrap things up and would explain some of the discrepancies between a few of the ideas that we've had so far. Like, this doesn't fit really at all with the triumphant fanfare we had. It certainly works within the context of, you know, the journey's over, it's time to relax. But it'd be very cool if it also had callbacks to motifs or musical ideas from other parts of the game as well. that really warm resolution. <laughs> Speaking of callbacks, this is the Legend of Zelda theme. Slow down. Lighter, less bombastic. turning it into a cannon. Well, it started as a cannon. And now it's turned into something else entirely. Just ornamental ideas coming from the flute style, the clarinet style instrument over here. This is actually a very cool rendition of the theme. bring it down. I figured with all of that build up, repeating that core first few notes of the motif over and over in different instruments, they were going to end on something larger. And instead they sort of bring it down and it ends, I'd say about half of an octave lower than I expected. So yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. I've never heard this before. I'm not a big Zelda fan. Uh, my introduction was Ocarina of Time, which a lot of people who play that are like, that started my obsession. You know, I loved everything Zelda after that. I never finished Ocarina of Time. It never really clicked with me. I've tried some others. The only ones that I, I like, Game Boy Color versions. Link's Awakening, DX, Oracle of Seasons, and Oracle of Ages. Every other Zelda game I've tried just doesn't work. I've tried Link to the Past. Just not a big fan of it. I'm sure I lost some some subscribers there. I might have lost some video game cred too. Like I care about that. <laughs> you want some other hot takes? Go to the Discord server, uh, the the Critical Reactions Discord server. Go to the video game group, and uh, yeah, I've got tons of hot takes in there too. So I've also defended tank controls. So <laughs> I have no video game cred, is what I'm saying. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. But yeah, so I've, I've never played this, never got an opportunity to listen to this. But I'm glad that I have now. I think this is a very cool rendition. And I do think I need to dig more into Koji Kondo's work on the Zelda soundtracks. Because while the games don't really click with me, I do like 
the music that he makes for them, what I've heard um, so far in my life. So, I should definitely dig into that a bit more. Let's dive into what's going on here, though. We start off with what I thought was really interesting was a lot of fanfare and then a reduction of intensity, of layers, of volume. We had this nice dwindling down in pitch on an instrument. And to me, that kind of felt like the rest after the, uh, the triumphant battle. But what I think what it really represents is a moment of relief. I assume Ganon is the final boss, as he's always the final boss, or possibly Ganondorf. I mean, they're kind of the same person, but whatever. Um, you know, you, you do your last sword swing on him, you beat the boss, and you can release the tension from your shoulders. You know the game's over. And assuming that it's not a game, and you are Link, and, you know, this is your life, there's a weight lifted off your shoulders now. The danger is gone. You've saved Hyrule. I think that's what that's supposed to represent. Because right after that, we have the victory fanfare. This is the celebration event. There's no time for rest yet. <laughs> um, and so I, I don't think that that descending piano line and the, the reduction of intensity is supposed to represent rest as much as relief. And I think that's very cool. I don't know where this takes place. Like I said, it's just the ending theme. It could be during the final bits of text, dialogue. You know, it's, it's, this is super NES. We didn't have cutscenes. Um, but it could also be credits, which takes place a little bit after the narrative events. So I might be a little bit off with my interpretation here, but that is the general feeling I'm getting out of that. We have an extended fanfare, very victorious, very celebratory, uh, lots of staccato notes. Interestingly, later on, we'll also bring in a marching snare idea, and the two of these are very common in militaristic ideas, uh, militaristic musical ideas, um, focusing on power, strength, uh, sometimes regalness, and also victory. And I think that's why, for the most part, we have a lot of those staccato notes in here. We have very sharp, accented endings to notes. Again, it could also be a limitation of the hardware, but it could also be a limitation of the hardware utilized in a thematically appropriate way. One of the cool things about listening to retro music like this is that limitations breed creativity. And you can absolutely use some of the limitations of the hardware in order to further accentuate the ideas you're trying to in your music. So, it might be a limitation, but it might also be something that was deliberately done or deliberately utilized to, uh, to sell this moment. And I think it does. There is a very victorious element to it about uh, an overcoming of battle specifically is what I feel in it. It's not necessarily victory of, you know, accomplishing, uh, you know, getting a degree or something, being the best farmer of Hyrule. There is something very combative about this overcoming with physical strength is what the fanfare tells me. And a lot of that comes down to the use of staccato notes, the very sharp, uniform ending of notes. It's, it's very militaristic. Um, and like I said, we do even get marching snare stuff towards the end of the song during the reprise of the, the theme song. The main Zelda song. <laughs> um, so I don't think that this is completely off the wall of a, of a read in the music. Um, what I do like about this is there is a little bit of variation in it. It takes up roughly three minutes, I think, is what we were looking at. Because I had mentioned that we were about the halfway point, And I thought that maybe we had hit a loop in the song. Because... You know, video game music tends to be loop-based, but if this is played over the credits, then Koji Kondo knew the exact length of time the music needed to take up, and it could be a linear song, which it does end up being. So, I do think that uh, there is little, if no, player control happening here, um, which means that it, you know, scripted movement, maybe scripted text, could also be credits, anything like that. Um... 
But yeah, it's about three minutes long after we exclude that little, the little intro, the the immediate victory jingle followed by the descending intensity. Uh, we have about three minutes for this this militaristic celebration jingle, or not jingle song section. Um. And within here, I thought we had actually reached the point of repetition, and we did. We we revisited the earliest motif in this section, but what's very cool is we added something new to it. Somewhere along the lines, we had added this ornamental, I think it was a clarinet sound off to the right, and it continued on after we returned to the first motif. However, where it was sort of this ornamental thing off to the side, sort of doing its own thing in the previous section. When we return to this core motif, it is now a response to the motif's call, which the motif wasn't a call at the beginning. This is just really great writing. It is fascinating to see one section, one, one idea, one, one musical concept be introduced. And it's sort of, it's not, it's not that it doesn't fit. It's just sort of doing its own thing. It's not related to anything else that's present. And then you bring back an older section and you're like, oh, it's sort of foreshadowing coming back here. But like we didn't know it was foreshadowing because we never heard these two sections connected before. But now that we hear them, there's a, co a very complete idea here. The call and response between these two. And it was built up over several ideas. It's just that's... Man, it's so good. It really is. Um, it's such a lovely idea. There's also what I think was overcoming a limitation of not having reverb. Um, I had mentioned that we had a lead melody coming off from the left, but there is something sort of center left over here that was playing the same exact thing, but a little quieter and a little delayed, just a hair behind. And it gave the effect of this reverb. It had a bit of... I don't know what you would call it. In in visuals, we would call it a bit of transparency. I don't know what you would call that in a musical term, but it almost feels like sonic transparency where it's still the sound that we were hearing, but it's just quieter, it's airier, it's more ethereal. It, it seems that it's just not taking up as much space, as much physicality to it. And that mixed with the delay sounds like it's the echo off of the room, the acoustics of the area that we're being that the music's being played in. It's the reverb of the room. It's very cool. Um, and again, restrictions, creativity. It's a natural pipeline from one to the other. Um, and it just it makes these instruments sound more like horns like real horns rather than the MIDI horns that they are. Or maybe even just the th synthesizer sound that it is. It might not even be MIDI horns. It's just that the sound has been manipulated enough to sound like trumpets to me. And then when you give it that reverb, it's just enough to trick my brain. I'm like, oh, these are pretty good trumpets in here. When really it's probably just like, I don't know, a sine wave or something. A and, you know, modulated this way and that way, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But it does a good job of crafting the feeling. And, you know, like I said, I never had a Super NES, but much later in my life, I kind of researched some of the hardware into all this. And the Super NES's sound chip is really good for its time. I mean... Uh, I kind of hope we get to listen to some Sega Genesis stuff this week as well. I have a soft spot for that since I grew up with a Genesis, but it's night and day the fidelity that these composers were able to get out of the very different sound chips. The Genesis was just way behind in technology as, fa as far as sound goes. Um, it has more of a gamey feel to it, where this... Like I said, it's a not a bad emulation of clarinets and horns and timpanis. Uh, if nothing else, I listen to them and I'm like, oh, that's trying to emulate this. This sounds like a clarinet. This sounds like a timpani over here. I don't think that would ever have happened uh, on any Genesis soundtrack. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just another thing to think about with some of this is, again, the, the restrictions of it. Nowadays, you just record whatever you want, you turn it into a WAV file or an MP3 file, you give it to some developer and they pop it into the game and they have an audio engine play that sound file. You have no restrictions to what you can do. But back in the day, you had to program for the chip itself. 
whatever sounds it could make was all that you had. And a lot of it was digital synthesizer stuff, so you had to do your best with that. You weren't getting, uh, you know, real strings. You weren't getting recorded orchestras <laughs> in the music. And so for this to, um, for, for me to hear this and be like, oh, you know, this sounds like a bunch of horns and timpanis and stuff, uh, it, that's impressive to me. After this big triumphant celebration section, we bring the energy down a little bit. There is still a drive. The staccato ideas are still here. The very sharp endings to notes, that's all still present. But it feels more at rest, as if, uh, you know, Link has walked away from the celebration party. And has gone to, you know, a tree on the hill to decompress, to think about the journey, all that. You can still hear the music off in the distance. It's loud, so it's not like he's going to get away from it. It just feels a bit more introspective. Um, just overall calmer. Even if the music itself hasn't really changed much, the timbre of it has dropped down. As I mentioned earlier, with the sort of uh, like transparency, I sort of feel that here as well. Again, I don't know a good analogy for sonic transparency, but that's sort of what this feels like. It's sort of hazy and ethereal, like it's not full-bodied, it's quieter than where we were. Um, and the note choices here also are less reflective of uh, bombast, of, of bright uh, celebration. We still have some of those sounds rhythmically, but harmonically we've kind of pushed into something that's a bit more contemplative. Uh, we do have the marching snare in the background of this. I really like this moment because it brings everything down. This is the end. Celebration, sure, but for the hero? It's finality. For the gamer, yeah, celebrate. You just beat the game. That's victory. Uh, but you know, you put your shoe, you put your feet in Link's shoes, and you just spent months of your life with this heavy stress and burden over you, and it's gone now. The last thing you want is more bright colors and loud sounds, and uh, you know, fireworks going off. You just want to be alone. You want to calm down. <laughs> Um, and so I like how it kind of brings the intensity down a little bit here. I thought this was nice. It feels uh, very personal. The rest of it is celebration. The whole town gets together to celebrate this freedom from being under the rule of Ganon and all this, whatever. This feels personal. This is a personal victory. I've saved the world. I'm confident in my ability. I can rest now. And then I really love how it takes this theme and then slowly molds it. You can begin to hear some twinklings of the classic Zelda theme in it. And then it goes full on and then just, just transitions into that. And it brings it full circle with the first Zelda game. As far as I'm concerned, it plays the main theme from that one. It's quite possible that this main theme is also present at the title screen of Link to the Past. Again, I haven't played it, so I'm not sure. But even if it's even if that's the case, it does bring it full circle with the beginning of the game. The first time you boot it up, you hear this sound. So regardless of where this sound might originate, um, in comparison to where it's utilized here in the end credits, it's still a type of ending the cycle where we where we began and bringing the entire concept full circle. Um, I do like how it is a <laughs> slowed and reverbed version of it, so to speak. Um, kind of bringing down the intensity of it and uh, again presenting a bit of rest. This is still the legend of how this happens is sort of how I understand these. I know like in the moment you're playing Link battling Ganon, but like every game is a different retelling of it and it feels like a legend depending on who tells you the story. There's different enemies, different bad guys, uh, you know, Link goes through different, uh, you know, areas and stuff like that. I've always kind of envisioned it like that, rather than the timeline thing that people have formed, which I just think is ridiculous. Um, again, another hot take from me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the idea that it brings back this theme and kind of cements it all as, again, this legend. It ends where it begins. Somebody else will tell this story again as well, and it's going to start with this same theme, and maybe it'll even end with the same theme. 
Um, and I really love how it does that, but also showcases going back to putting us into the moment of this character. He's at a place of rest and he's finally beginning to realize the legend that he is. He defeated Ganon. He saved Hyrule. That's a really big deal. And so we take this introspective, calming victory and then put a sense of pride into it based on our interpretation of this main theme being so closely tied to the series, which I I guess it would have been Miss Link to the Past the sec. Well, no, because we also had Zelda 2 on NES. But I think the Game Boy game, uh, Link's Awakening would have already come out. I think that uses the theme too. So there is a larger group that we could associate this theme to where we can see a pattern. Um, and like I said, it, it sort of brings the gamer and uh, Link into the same place of uh, feeling the connection of the concept of becoming a legend. Although for the gamer, it's more of seeing the legend being retold over and over. And for Link, it's fitting into that mold of being someone who, who will be remembered through history. Uh, the cause of the, the verbal recreation of the legend over time. Yeah, it all comes together rather well. I think it encompasses a lot of feelings that work both for the person playing and to embody the character himself. There's no lyrics on this, which I don't think we'll have lyric discussions much of this week, especially if we do keep with the retro theme. Oh, well, they're all retro. Everything has to come from pre-2000, but I think that does... Can, that does allow in some CD-based games, which means we could have vocals on some of the songs. But uh, yeah, I'm not thinking we're going to have vocal analysis much this week at all. But yeah, that, so that wraps this one up. Those are my thoughts. Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Ending Theme by Koji Kondo. What did you think of this track? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about it. Put all that stuff down in the comments section. Come on. There we go. Above that, in the description box, I think I use a little uh, Bluetooth keypad because uh, I don't have $200 for a, a stream deck to do all the fancy cool stuff. Uh, and sometimes it goes to sleep if the videos are too long. <laughs> I gotta like wake it back up. I push the button. Notes. Anyways, I'm rambling. Uh, link tree in the description box takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for this one. We do have a special selection coming up next in a vast shift of genre and sound. We're going to be checking out Primus. If that doesn't interest you, though, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. As usual, we're going to check out some more retro video game music. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.